Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bar habitifillah, the question was asked How can I stay grounded and stay adherent to the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The da'wah to salafiyya, da'wah to ahl sunnah And there are few salafis with there being few Salafis in my locality? And this is a question that's often asked, and you find this in many places around the world. Uh, first and foremost, al-ilm al-nafiya is beneficial knowledge, and that a person must seek knowledge and seek beneficial knowledge from those people they trust that illustrate that they adhere to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala minhaj salaf with the methodology of the Salaf. That means they're not uh, Ashari in Creed. They're not Diobandi. They are not uh, Hizbi as well. Because as we mentioned countless times, Al-Ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat. It isn't sufficient that someone says they're Salafi or a, a, a group of brothers and sisters claim their Salafi or a charity organization or whatever the case may be. But that the reality is in their practice and understanding, not in their name. So it's not sufficient just to claim. You have to see, you will see fruits from Ahlus Sunnah. Ahlus Sunnah, as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, uh, Ahlus Sunnah, Arham al Nas. Bihalk, that Ahl Sunnah are the most merciful to the creation. Why? Because they're practicing the deen completely as it should be practiced. That means they're following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the Madhab of the Salaf in Aqidah, in Creed, in how they understand uh, Tawheed, Tawheed al Wubiyah, Tawheed al Uluhiyah, Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. That they're practicing the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah in the Fahim and the Salaf with how they. Uh, their methodology of da'wah, their minhaj, how they, what congregates them together and what they adhere to, how they give da'wah. Are they calling to themselves? Are they calling to their group? Are they calling to uh, one sheikh or two or three or four or five mashayikh? These things go against the minhaj of the salaf. So then you know that those claims should be called into question when someone claims that you must follow Sheikh so and so, you must bl blind follow Sheikh so and so. If they teach you blind following, then you know this is a sign of Hezbiyah, not Salafiyah. Uh, another important thing is in Ibadat, that they are uh, a people of Ibadah in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibadah is built upon two things it's built upon uh, two conditions that a person has sincerity, ikhlas lillah, so when you're praying, it's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. When you are fasting, it's fasting uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. When you are making hajj or umrah, it is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's fulfilling those acts of ibadah to, to Allah alone, to worship Him and Him alone. That's uh, ikhlas. And likewise, that it is in accordance with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second pillar or condition of that ibadah, of that worship, is that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So ikhlas wa mutaba, that it is uh, sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, also, it is very important to understand the minhaj of the salaf. So that way you know how to distinguish haq from batil. That you have to know what the minhaj is and you can only do that by al nafi by seeking knowledge. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Man Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives him understanding of the religion. And likewise, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah, Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. So keeping that in mind, the point of being from Ahl-Sunnah 
is to get to Jannah. It's to get to Jannah because it's the path of the righteous, of the Salihin. It's the path of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa uh, Abu Bakr wa, wa, wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiallahu ta'ala alayhi wa because the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhi wa were the beginning of the Salaf. They are the head of the Salaf. And the Tabi'een with Tabi'a Tabi'een. Those are the first three generations. The Prophet said, Khairan as Qarni thumma ladinu yalunun thumma ladinu yalunun. The best people are those of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. That shows that there's uh, fadl and superiority of being from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Mijma'een and that generation, and then after them, and then after them. That those are the best three generations of this ummah and then those who follow them in righteousness until yom qiyamah and we know that the shar began to to increase meaning bid'ah and uh, sectarianism all the groups of innovation began to arise so it's very important to have some understanding to have an understanding of what it means to follow the salaf and what it means to be salafi and salafia likewise is built upon manners so if you see people who claim to be salafi but they are the worst in treating people they are the most suspicious then they are going against the sunnah of the prophet how dare i say that well i say that because the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who we claim to follow who we are trying to follow his sunnah والسلام, said ma min shayin athqala fi meizan mu'min yawm al-qiyam min husn wa khulq there isn't a thing with that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And, and verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So if you see a person with wicked manners and horrendous speech, that they don't know how to deal with people, they don't know how to deal with differences, they don't know how to deal with uh, people on the same menhaj as them, and they don't even know how to deal with Ahl Bidah or other Muslims that may need da'wah. You see that they're always rough and aggressive with people. They're attacking people. And you see that they only call to themselves. Know that those are pillars of Hezbiyah. And if you see that they likewise, as we mentioned, that that hadith that shows us that that is heavy on the scale of the believers. So that means the believers, those who follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should be striving to have good manners. They should be striving to better their practice and how they deal with humankind. Because how can they be the most merciful to the creation by giving guidance and dawa and showing the example without showing an example, without being an example and living an example themselves. So it's very important that all of those things, those all make up the menhaj of the salaf that all of those pillars, all of those principles, that they are the a part of the minhaj of the Salaf. Likewise is how to deal with Ahl Bidah. And that we see that the Asl of the Salaf is the Salaf were very stern. In general, they were very stern with dealing with Ahl Bidah. They didn't compromise with Ahl Bidah because they knew that that Bidah was a distortion of the religion and must be shunned in order not to be accepted by the general people and not to exist and distort the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as when the bayina came to the ummah uh, that came before us, they differed. They, they, they didn't go astray until the clarity came to them. So that means when the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to the people, that's when they begin to go astray. Because they don't adhere to what the Prophet والسلام, came with. Instead, they want a new way. Instead, they want a new uh, menhaj, a new methodology, a new way of dawah, a new way of, 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 of understanding. And then they claim that it comes from Kitabillah wa Sunnah Rasul. So it's very important. The only way you can distinguish those things and understand truth from falsehood is by looking as is through Islamic knowledge. And then putting what you see and what you witness with your clique, with your crew, with your group, putting that on that scale. Those are just some advices. Likewise, seek out those people who are in your community. You've described that you live in a, a sp specific place. 
in Europe that uh, does not have many Salafis or Salafis close to you. And because you are a female, that it is even more difficult because at least males, they have more ability usually to move around and the brotherhood and it's easier to be around. So my advice would be to hopefully seek out local students of knowledge there that know the situation and can be of assistance and help you to get around good sisters. A last point I want to mention is that what shows that uh, people uh, are not adhering to the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we mentioned, that they have sour manners and also sinfulness, that if they are people who are just immersed in sins, that this, of course, the sinfulness is not a part of the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are dangerous uh, uh, people to be around with because they can only drown you in sin. And one of the sins that they can drown you with is backbiting, ghiba and namima. If you see that you found a, a, a group of people and all they do is talk about others and all they do is backbite and they're not harsh and, they're, and all you see is they're suspicious. Where is so-and-so from? Which group is he with? That, that, that's how they begin all of their, everything they do. Then you, can, then you see that there's, they're differing with the son of the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, said, Iyakum wa dhan. فَإِنَّ الظَّنْ أَكْذَبُ الْحَدِيثِ وَلَا تَحَاسِدُ وَلَا تَبَابُدُ وَلَا تَدَابُرُ وَلَا تَ... The Prophet said, Beware of suspicion, for verily suspicion is the worst of speech. And do not be envious of one another, and do not spy on one another, and do not uh, turn your backs on one another and cut one another off, and do not cheat one another, and be brothers, be be brothers uh, in the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a command from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever we have a, al-amr, al-amr yufid al-wujub, whenever there's a command in the sharia that shows us it's an obligation, and uh, at, in its asal, unless there's other dalil, other evidence from the book of Allah or the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to show that it's mustahab or one of the other ahkam. And likewise, whenever we have a nahi, a nahi yufid al-tahrim, that when there's a prohibition in the shara from the book of Allah or the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that shows that that is prohibited, it's muharram to do that. And since the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited Backbiting, as he said in another hadith, مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قبرين فقال إنهم يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهلهما فكان لا يستر من البو أما آخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was walking by two graves, and he said, "Verily, they are being punished, and they're being punished for something which the people don't take as something great. As for one of them, they used to not clean their garment or clean themselves when they uh, used to." Uh, urinate. As for the other, they used to carry, they used to uh, practice namima, meaning that they practice wicked speech, spreading it around the community, uh, you know, in order to cause facade in the community. So how many people do we hear that they claim that they're Salafi, but they're the biggest spreaders of wickedness, meaning that they only backbite, they backbite the ulama, they don't even have shame with the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, that they back by ulama if they perceive it's a mistake or even if the scholar has made a mistake they eat their flesh when they're not even nothing compared to those people who serve the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they easily eat the flesh of the duat they belittle them they curse them they attack their honor they attack everything about them easily and they carry tales with the intention of spreading wickedness around the community. And that goes against what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And that's one of the major sins that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned it. So how can a people who do this be called Salafi? These are not characteristics of following the Salaf. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect is from myself and the Shaytan. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam.